to be efficient bees says make sure I'm and I'm opening the who's the October 15 2024 meeting of the OCAM board of selectmen we pledge the stamp of the pledge of allegiance <laughs> Do we have a motion to approve warrants, payroll, and payables? Uh, I make a motion to. Um, for warrant WR 25-08 payables and warrant PR 25-07 payroll. Second. Any discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Minutes. And no minutes to approve, right? Okay, next up is public session. Is there anybody here for public session? Roshinsky, Northbrook Field Road. Um, can someone answer why this, we don't have our 61A form yet for the taxes? 61A. 61A comes from the Board of Assessors. Uh, and if, oh. I, I got Usually two calls. They're out well before now, and mm -hmm. they have to be filed. I can't remember the date they have to be filed. Very sure. soon. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. haven't received one yet at all, and I don't think we're the only ones. No, you're not. I got two calls on it last night. I was going to bring it up today, too. But I suggested that the people that called me last night talk, speak with the assessor on Thursday, because that is the day that she works. See you right now. Mm -hmm. Let me go to the I'm going to check. Diane might be in here now. It's just we don't want to be late, but oh, if we don't get it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> There's one other person. Session. This is for um, Chapter 61. Oh, I'm John Diamond, East Hill. Uh, I've got to just a couple issues that I'd like the town to look into. And one of them is this catch basin out front here. Who put off the catch basin below grade that we have to pull over because there's traffic coming down and there's parking on the um, library side that you go into this hole. That needs to be addressed because it, I don't know if I damaged my car or not, but I had to replace a wheel bearing. So this needs to be addressed out here because it poses a, a, a danger the people driving up and down the road. That's the one on Maple Street? No, that's the one right out front. Right, right in front, front of the, the sign? Yep. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Second, I, I'm, the, I'm under the impression that the traffic pattern down here on Rutland Road in Weir Corner is going to be changed because the line goes to Weir Corner, uh, from Weir Corner over the Rutland Road traffic coming down the hill, nobody uses their blinker. They just think it's part of where corner or Rutland Low. And there's been a couple instances where there's been a few close calls here. So I'd like that situation addressed as soon as possible. So have we heard back from Fred? No, we have about the signage? No. All right, so I'll follow up with that tomorrow. All right. Find out why we're working on it. Okay. No. I mean, before there's an incident. Another one. There's two holes up on Beach and Road that have been dug by some incompetent moron. They're about three feet deep, and they could fall into the trenching mass general law, an open trench. Two people have been pulled out of one of them in the winter from plowing. It's only a matter of time before somebody comes down and goes, the, the whole, one of the holes is right off the pavement. Somebody could go into that hole, grab a bid, get killed. 
or that's, seriously injured. That's the cross culverts? Yep. Going under the road? Yep. It was never a structure put in. It was just a big hole dug. So you've been put on notice, and if anything happens. What part of Beecham? Uh, just above uh, the Beecham House residence. Okay. And probably about uh, 300 feet or so up the road. There's a second one. I think it's. Uh, so between Richards and Beecham's. Yes. There's two of them there on the uh, north side of the road. And that's only on that that one side, yep. or is it on both sides? No, it's on one side. I don't know if the the culvert have ever been checked. Those are old culverts. If they have to be replaced, the road's got to get dug up. So there's no structure there or anything, no markers, no safety whatsoever. Okay. All right. We'll let highway know about that. Okay. Speaking of the highway, uh, are we using the ex highway guy for uh, consulting? No. Why is he spending so much time with the the barn? Should put a stop to that because that's a liability. That's loitering. If he gets injured, you'd be on the hook. I didn't realize he was up there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anything else, John? Thank you for looking into that. Okay. All right. We'll be back with you. And if we can just circle back quickly to <clears throat> 61A. She said that they were sent out. They, they're receiving them, but here's the form. Um, it's, so if you hear of anyone else, send okay. them that I way. Know there was some but I can't she, she, you got to, okay, we'll grab them from her. Um, she has a folder with the ones that she's received back, so I'm not really sure. Why are they missing so many? I don't know. I, I do know, however, the post office is having difficulty at times, and some things are not being received, and some things that need to be coming back are not coming back. Oh, we just keep it on the calendar as a reminder, and the best thing to do, yeah, it's the best thing to do. State election warrant for November 5th, 2024. Make a motion that we sign and post the election warrant for the fifth day of November, 2024. In the name of the Commonwealth, you are hereby required to notify and warn the inhabitants of said town who are qualified to vote in elections to vote at the Ocam Town Hall. On Tuesday, the fifth day of November, 2024, from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. And for the following purposes, and it is presidential elections, um, Senate elections, state elections, etc. cetera. Uh, and ballot questions. And I'm not gonna read through them because they're involved, but um, okay, is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Mm -hmm. I'll give this to Maribel for tomorrow. Next up, North Brookfield Town Administrator <clears throat> regarding the Senior Center Regionalization Discussion. Mike. Thank you. Mike, we can bring two more chairs up here if you if you like if you'd like them. Perhaps the senior center director and also our council on aging chair. Okay.
with a little bit of cool. Thank you. You're welcome. That's okay. okay. I got it. I got yeah, it. It makes no it makes a lot of it's noise. Okay. No worries. This side. Are you good there? Do you want me to Thank you for, a good chair? Thank you for inviting us. Thank you for reaching out to us. Well, actually, you reach out to us first, this gentleman here. Uh, yes, he was tasked by our Council on Aging to seek out if people would or other COAs would be interested in merging. Absolutely. He came to my office and, and we discussed it. Uh, I talked to Courtney. Uh, she's our COA director, and she feels Thank that we you. have a large enough center and enough capacity to take more people in. And certainly we would like to, on both sides, reap the benefits of, of the uh, economies of scale. Uh, we're both doing the same thing. And, and if we do it together, we can have more programs and, and uh, perhaps better services for our seniors. Have this uh, sheet of paper. Did we, we bring copies for them? I, just I can make copies. Okay. Front and back. Okay. Has has a background on our our, uh, our building. It's a four thousand square foot building, a little larger, accessible, and uh, some of the uh, uh, some of the activities we have and. Potentially, if there's interest, uh, we could add more activities, perhaps more hours, uh, if we combine our resources. How many days are you open now? Monday through Thursday from 9 to 2. 9 to 2. Yeah. And the senior center is still off the, uh, the common playground? It is oh, up on Forest Street. Forest Street. Yeah. Forest Street. yeah. Yes, yeah. the former market. Yep, the former uh, projects. Yep, they just put a new roof on the building, so it's in pretty good shape. Yep. Uh, we're working on the kitchen, improving that. So uh, we've, we've got congregate meals twice a week, Monday and Wednesday. Yep. So, uh, how many people do you serve? Uh, roughly. Maximum we try to see on Wednesdays is 25, but for our special meals, we've done up to six meals. Yeah. Who does the special meals? The volunteers. I have about six to eight volunteers that work very hard to put on the meals. Um, so beginning in December, we're bringing in Tri Valley to do meals on Monday, but we've been doing the weekly meals. I, as long as I've been there, I was, I started back in 2022 as the program and outreach assistant, and I recently became director in May. So, um, I have, so it's myself and I have a program and outreach coordinator as well. And then we have a janitor. We had a receptionist up until April of this year. Unfortunately, she retired and then she passed away recently. So, oh, sorry to hear that. The meals that the volunteers make, are they based on any specific nutritional needs? We try to keep them nutritional, yes. Um, we include your vegetables, your proteins. We try to balance everything out. Um, they like to center on, uh, so I, the cooks have the ability to choose what they want to make most of the time. Um, sometimes budget-wise, if things go a little bit over, because we have a set budget, our food is um, funded by our friends group. So we have, we have a very active friends group. They do at least two big fundraisers for us a year, and they have two accounts. So they have our general account, which is what we use to purchase anything from, we had to replace the TV recently, they paid for that. They also replaced our refrigerator last year. Um, and then they also have our food account and that covers all our lunches, all our special meals. Um, so yeah, yep. We're able to do that with through their help. Uh, 
I know in some senior places they have chefs and other senior places they do allow people who are their friends or their members cook the meals and they're not nutritional. There's a lot of macaroni and cheese and things like that, which of course is not, it has to right. be balanced. Right. Yep. Yes. We do a lot of, so when we do meals, we, um, we'll do salads a lot of times mm -hmm. with the meal. We'll do Every once in a while, we'll have we'll add milk. It's hard to do the milk all the time because not everybody drinks milk. Yeah, I know dietary restrictions, but um, yeah, we try to balance things out. Okay. One of our biggest meals actually is our Thanksgiving meal. We do it for free. Mm -hmm. We have last year we had forty patrons come in for it, and we just we go all out. We have a little bit of everything. Might be a little high carb, but that's usually the only one. Of course. During yeah. the year, that's the high carb. Yeah. And then for Christmas, the past two years, we've catered our Christmas meal. Who catered? So, um, last year, we used a, it was Common Ground in North Brookfield. Mm -hmm. They provided the meal. And the year before, we actually went to a place out in Sturbridge. It was Hearthstone. That's it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It was very good. Yeah. Yeah. And again, the friends help pay for that as well. So So they have very good fundraisers if they can they do, do all of these. Yeah. Okay. Can the council on aging ask some questions too? Not right now. This is this was set up for uh, as as the agenda says, this is a meeting for for the Board of Selectmen and the town of North Brookfield. I'm just thinking that some of the questions might help elucidate some of the mm -hmm. things that you might want to talk about. Well, they may still get to them. Um, on the second page, you have mm -hmm. health and activities. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Um, so I see the four things that you have. What else do you do for like uh, health and wellness, say screening programs besides blood pressure and so what we're, else do you do? We're working on trying to get those programs back. So we had two major things. The first was the director at the time, Diane Nichols passed away back in 2020 mm -hmm. and then COVID. Right. happened. So after that, there was a lot of change going on. So I'm actually trying to work on getting some of the regular screenings that she had going um, back into the programming. So what did she have at the time? She used to do, she did, I believe it's life, is it lifeline? She had the, they would do like it's a body scan. She would have them come in. Um, she did a lot of outreach where she had um, I think she had like a lot of speakers coming in to talk about different things they did. She did fall prevention programming. She did, I found some material on um, Memory Cafe. So I've been going through all her records and trying to find a list of so that. She had like a mental health yes. screening and yep. um, other things. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Whether it was cardiology, you know, or yep. just general. Then we had a hearing aid clinic. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We have I the foot clinic. Of course, we have the foot clinic once a month. Yep. Yep. You have podiatry. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's she's, definitely is been still working out of the kitchen. Is who the podiatrist? Well, she. It, there's a little room off of the kitchen, not yes. the kitchen uh, yeah. proper, but it's a room where we have. A hand washing sink, and we have some uh, cupboards where we store things. But one of the things that I am looking at is moving. Um, where we have, when you walk into the building, there's like an area that's kind of like it's kind of partitioned off. Mm -hmm. um, I just actually was talking about getting higher petitions, possibly, and to make it so that it's more cordoned off and to have more activities in there. Um, one of the challenges is the layout of the building itself. It's very, it's an open floor plan. So trying to get 
too many it's getting activities going at the same time it's a little bit challenging we did try to have a music program in there and it did not work out because the partition they're just not high enough right now so i'm i am looking into making that more permanent and trying to without no, I'm familiar I've been yeah inside. yeah yeah without doing construction and building a whole wall but getting a little bit more privacy in there and parking's adequate for most days yes okay yeah. Unlike most things in North Brookfield, it has it has a dedicated parking lot, which makes it quite easy to right. park. Downtown is not so easy. Oh. That'll be all nicely paved in a few years, right? Downtown. We are working on it. We we're starting a sidewalk project uh, with the next couple of weeks on uh, the main street. It's going to be. Uh, continue up in the spring by School Street up to yep. past Vibram. Uh, and that's phase one of well, a number of phases. I don't know what the number is going to be yet. North Street was done a couple of years ago, and that looks really nice. They are really trying. With the granite curbing. I don't think that's actually granite. I think it's cast in place concrete. Is, is that what it is? I think granite was too much money. Well, it looks like granite. Yeah, it's meant to, but <laughs> it looks nice. But it won't look like granite in 70 years. No. How many members do you usually have for activities? We vary between active members mm -hmm. across all of our activities. We're about the same. We have, I would say, at the most 30. It varies. It definitely varies during the year. I would right. say. Is that on a given day or? On a given day? We have about 25. Um, so our biggest draw generally for the public is our food distribution that we do on Tuesday. Good. We have up to 25. A couple of weeks, we had 30 people coming in. Um, over the summer, I was able to add fresh produce to it. So that's been a big draw. We're actually starting to wind down the growing season. So mm. that was a Thank big, you. it was a big draw. I was... We were lucky to be able to partner with the local farm that decided to just, we've gotten like, I think $400 worth of produce for free to be able to distribute to the seniors to go along with the food that we get from Hannaford as well. I don't know if you know the answer, but do you ha have folks coming in, say from OCAM, West Brookfield, East Brookfield, from other towns we to do participate? Allow. Yep. So we have been allowing over the past few years, we've been allowing Brookfield to join us as well, only because they themselves do not have a building. They don't have a senior center. They meet in the church basement over there. So we allow them to come over and partake in our programming as well. Um, we've had seniors come from West Brookfield for our wellness, mm -hmm. for Tai Chi and yoga. Um, we have a few people that come from Spencer for our foot clinic only because they've noted that it's harder to get in with other places. Their lists are long. Like they're very long. Yeah. Yep. So, and we have like her, it's $30 for someone mm -hmm. to come in. So we fill up really quick with that one as well. So yeah. Yeah, yeah sure. Repeat that again a little louder. I'm sorry. I didn't oh, hear what you said. But the foot clinic. Yeah, so we have we have a few people that come from Spencer mm -hmm. that partake in that um, in different towns. Mm -hmm. um, what we do with them is they they pay the full price. Our seniors, so if it would be OPM and North Brookfield, they would pay like a portion of that, and then the friends or I'm looking for a grant. Actually, actually, I just got a grant to help cover the other part of that to offset it. So. Because we've been using the formula grant to offset the podiatry yeah. for the OCAM people. Okay. Just so that you know that up for there. Yeah. Okay, good. What would the uh, the impact of OCAM joining North Brookfield do to your daily operations? Would it be a major impact? Not at all. Uh, a manageable impact? I think the so and looking at the numbers and everything, I think it's gonna have very little impact on our day-to-day -day operations. I think the only it might be 
extending some hours just to fit all the activities into the day might be the only thing that I could come up with that would be a problem. Um, our seniors are very welcoming. They they heard about what was going on and a lot of them have gotten kind of excited to see some new faces coming in. Um, we have, we have, it's, it's, I've, I've been there for two years. I feel like it's a very warm and welcoming environment and that they're, we're willing to accommodate whatever. I know they, there's different activities here. Mm -hmm. We can definitely, we're willing to accommodate and welcome anybody else in. I think certainly, um, I don't know if anything that's not listed on here, you're currently doing, but I think that's an opportunity to, to start new programs and have them more active because you're gonna have a larger critical mass of seniors participating. So right. you, there'll be more opportunities for affinity groups. And I think if we truly regionalize, I think there'll be more opportunities for grants. The state has been pushing regionalization and I think when you apply for a grant as a as a regional entity, you're looked at somewhat more favorably. And I think that would help both towns. Do you have any questions on Boston's here? We have I'm, I'm getting okay. the, <laughs> yeah. I'll let you ask. Our, our you know, one of our main focus, of course, is the financial impact. Yes. What you would be expecting, what a contract would look like. Uh I would assume that we would combine our formula grants and uh, we would have to look at the operational costs and and uh, probably s split them either on a, a proportional uh, basis based on population or based on senior population. And I don't know if that would be that different. Um, right now, uh, you said the beyond the formula grant, your your uh, Budget is was sixty four thousand. Yeah. I don't know if we could. There would be economies, so it wouldn't. You know that uh, split in some way would be adequate in addition to the formula grant, or maybe a little more than that. But uh, certainly, it it would be uh, more economical to taxpayers as a whole. Uh, it's always easier to run and cheaper to run one facility rather than two. And certainly we can provide, I think, how many hours are you open now? I think we're on the same schedule as they are. Okay. Monday through Thursday. And I'd also, uh, and I don't know if it'll be available. Uh, I look, I know there are grants out there for transportation. Uh, to have a, a van uh, would probably have to be staffed by volunteers, but um, we, we've, I've done that in other communities. Uh, we're not that far away. I measured it's seven miles. Uh, I, from the parking lot at Vibram to here was 6.7. Okay. That was close. Very close. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't hear again. I must be getting really hard of hearing. <laughs> I was I'm talking sorry. about distance. Uh, oh, distance. Yeah. Okay. I was, you were uh, talking about transportation. Or well, I think that. You know, what once you get a, a mass of people and we're, we're regionalized, it makes it a lot easier to get grants for transportation services. Uh, and keep that as it were. <clears throat> okay, uh, just to clarify, your amount of your formula grant is 17, roughly $17,000. That's what it was last year. Um, okay, and then the rest of the money to is sixty four thousand. Then is extra for yes. your staff. Yes. yes, yes, yeah, yeah. But unless we add significant hours, I think the staff is going to be out of question. Okay. The one thing also we're trying to be very careful with with anything that we do with our seniors is our lunch program. Mm -hmm. We were with elder services mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we are planning on keeping elder services for our seniors. Okay. So they would not be participating in your lunch program. Okay. Unless something comes up that we're not able to do that. How, how many days a week do you do lunch? 
Lunch is four days a week, Monday through Thursday. No. Well, no, they come to our senior center, they can eat. They can. They... Yeah, I know, they can. But if they need something like uh, Meals on Wheels, then they have to go to Worcester because we have Tri-Valley. You do have Tri-Valley. Yes. Yeah, we work with Tri Valley. Right. No, that I do realize. And we checked with Tri Valley, and they said they could not service somebody who lived in Oakham. They could not provide services. Right. We're out of your district. Yeah. Right. I make an observation. I'm sorry, but we seem to have two distinct populations one that go to congregate meals, and others that participate in other activities. So it, it's a pretty good split. So you wouldn't have to worry about that. Okay. So Lucy also on our our meals were covering Hardwick. Hardwick comes to our senior center to have their meals on wheels prepared. And then she goes to Hardwick. They merged with Barry. And they did not take their seniors meals on wheels program. So we prepare that for them. And then their driver comes, picks it up from us and delivers them. They have quite a few. They had last week, they had 32 on their list. So they had a quite a sizable list for their town. Right so now. Kind of part of the dynamic with keeping that part of an OCAM, because mm -hmm. if we just cut it loose, then, you know, what is We're going to impact out Hardwick, of here? Would right. Hardwick, yeah. if we don't keep doing this, we would impact them. And they are elder services. They're not Tri-Valley. So yes. it would work out better that for them to stay with us anyway. Right. Right. I agree, yes, yes, definitely. Yes. I did um, I did a little bit of research. I did talk with um, MCOA, Mass mm -hmm. Council on Aging, um, to see if they've ever had anybody like with the merging of different ASAP areas. Mm -hmm. um, then they did tell me that it would end up being, I work with two separate Agency, so I'd have to work with Tri Valley for North Brookfield and then um, Elder Services for OCAM. So, yeah, interesting. Yeah, okay, all right, that's good. You're okay doing that? Yeah, yep. yep. They're pretty much both agencies are pretty much the same, so it's just the area. It's the same food, but different area. Yeah. Yeah. But whatever we get from them for lunch, they get the same lunches. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like it or not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they do get the same. Yeah. Except for the days then that you have that option yes. of coming on the days where your volunteers do make the lunches, which yeah. is very nice group of volunteers that you have to yeah. do that. Very nice. Okay. Um Lucy, we would we want to ask North Brookfield for a monetary estimate that's what i was in the process of doing <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> you sounded like you were going to wrap it up <laughs> you know no i i just wanted to make sure you know what else you would expect from us if we merged i don't want to be hit with any surprises fair enough oh, i think we need to sit down and, and get a formal Mm -hmm. I, would, I would need to see something formal, maybe from your finance committee, even. I can do that. Uh, I'm having a, a little bit of trouble right now, and, but it's short term. Uh, some uh, issues with the chair mm -hmm. and his family, but uh, we should be meeting within the next couple of weeks. Because that would give us the, the opportunity to run it through our finance mm -hmm. to keep bring them up to speed as to where it's going or could go. All right, certainly. Dawn, you got it. I'm just gonna say, was there another question? Does anybody have any stats on population or anything that are required? I, I do have you know, questions, but that we made 10. <laughs> That's it. So the first question I have is, does anybody have any stats, you know, of, so that your finance committee may ask you for stats. That's the other thing I'm thinking of. But they may say, what's the population? You know, what? how many people do you think will be coming? That kind of thing. So, you know, if they ask you, I've prepared stats, 
um, because I have to, in any case, for um, the uh, the grant, the formula grant. So I have those stats if you right. need them. So right. the offer's on the table. Mm -hmm. I, I'm familiar with the relative uh, sizes and stats on the population. Um, I don't have that directly on senior population, which is our relevant group. So I I, I can obtain that. Yeah, I think you have it for North Brookfield, but uh, I'd have yeah, to ask the you for data's the data's not in yet for, uh, for, yeah. for the OCAMPA. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's on the formula grant site under the town of OCAMP. Yes, yeah. we haven't gotten the one for this year, and no. ours is in... I looked at it from last year real quick. Yes. Um, it was, I can't remember off the top. Yeah, of it's based on the 2020 federal yes. census. Yeah. So yes. it's not going to change no. for 10 years. It won't change. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I figure people coming and going will probably stay relatively yeah. constant. I did have our town clerk. She was trying to get some more concrete yeah. numbers for yeah. me. Um, I think she's still working on that because she's been a little bit with the elections and things like that. So she was trying to get those numbers together for me. Mm -hmm. um, I can check in with her tomorrow and see if she, how far she's gone with that. But if you need them, I have them. Okay. Do you have a sign-in process so you can to track attendance at the senior center? We have the my senior center. Okay, so that you get good numbers okay. on. Mm -hmm. So there is a, a question that I think might be relevant. Um, so you use my senior center. I know you do. Yes. As, yeah. as do we. Yeah. And senior centers can have, in my senior center, you can have satellite. Uh, operations. Yeah, satellite operations. Yeah. So my question was for you, especially because we want to keep congregate meals here and uh, the meals on wheels. But uh, so uh, officially, we would not have a senior center here. So it would be, would you consider having a satellite site so people can check in? Absolutely. I actually, so <laughs> yeah, one of the things, center. yeah, one of the things when this first came up that we were, I was thinking about was having office hours, if that makes sense, over here mm -hmm. between myself and the program and outreach coordinator. Okay. Um, so I just got a, I have an interim outreach coordinator. I'm hoping mm -hmm. she's going to be permanent in a week. Okay. But she is very driven mm -hmm. with, she's actually, she came from Spencer yeah. um, COA. So she's she did that for a year and a half. Um, she's very driven to do whatever she needs to do to service seniors yeah. in the area. So she has no problem with traveling or anything like that. And uh, neither do I. So that was, it was, that definitely came up in okay. my thought process was, because yeah. I think it, it would be expecting a lot for seniors to drive from here into North Brookfield. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I have no problem coming over here. Okay. Yeah, that's really nice. That's really good. And this way, there would be one, my senior center, it would be North Brookfield with a satellite site here. Yeah. So we would actually be logging in our satellite site to you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. I'm just thinking of the mechanics. Now. Yeah. The other thing, too, is I noticed that my senior center has a ability to, I can download our database. Mm -hmm. So you can upload them to yours, yeah. which makes the transition very easy. Just, just point of interest for people that have to deal with it. Nobody yeah. else cares, frankly, so, yeah. okay. Um, the other question I had was, you know, we get phone calls here from senior citizens. Mm -hmm. So the question we had was how to man the phones. And, you know, even if we could arrange somehow that they called the number here, so there's no change for them, but it gets forwarded to you in North Brookfield mm -hmm. for answering. So that would be a consideration as well. Try to make it kind of seamless to to people that you know that may reach out. They would call Depend the same your phone, phone number before I tell you North Brookfield okay. would be your. I tell is our phone system. Yeah. I, I don't yeah. know. He I might. Know. They don't might know if, be under that. If that it has that capacity, and I'm, I'm not sure. We would it, we would have to. It might be them. easier just to put it on the town website mm -hmm. with the new phone number to eight six seven. Yeah, we could do that. You know, as, instead as of as long as they have a computer, we're good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They don't have a computer. We're not good. Well, you would dispatcher. you would be sending them out notice anyway. If this yeah. happened, yeah. you would send them out paper 
notices to with all the, with seniors the with the new phone number and everything else that's involved so that they services. wouldn't have any questions that, is what that we're doing. Do that. These do it at work all the time. Yeah. But anyhow, it's for a point of consideration. It's not a yes or no. Um, we wanted to negotiate maybe if you could have a welcoming for people from OCAM so they could get settled in and hear everything that you can offer the center to. Oh, know? absolutely. Yeah, oh, yeah we, we can. We'd yep. certainly be doing outreach. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yep. And having uh, events. Uh, is... The, uh, the most popular activities, I saw your, your um, Tai Chi instructor. Mm -hmm. I thought she did a wonderful job. Yeah. Um, the biggest... Biggest activities are functional fitness and uh, Zumba. We got the Zumba from them anyway to begin with. So they, they're pretty well accustomed to that. Yeah. The Zumba from them? We yeah. did? Yes, we did. That's, John, you got it? that's where I got it from. We've actually been trying to find a Zumba instructor. Well, no, Melanie. Yeah. So Melanie. Our, what happened was, our, it started to decline oh, the number okay. of people that we had coming. Yeah. Um, we've actually been, I've been working for a year trying to find a spot to get her to come back in. Yeah. So yeah. if you guys have people that are wanting to come in, I am definitely oh, yeah, we on like board it. for getting her back in there. Oh, Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. Okay. And a lot thing? of those are up for further discussion. Yeah. Oh, okay. Tonight was for. Okay. Just to get used to them and yeah, be well, financially, you know, where we are at, where you are at, and, and to get a feel for how it could work with you. Just do one more and I'm done. We have an inventory of medical devices. So, you know, just consider that in your plans. You know, should we heave ho it or would you like it? <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. Didn't you send them some already? I did. I brought did. some. Over. I thought Barbara said that at their last meeting, so we're all and set on that too. Well, that well, we would have to more. decide what to do with our stuff. That that was the extra. We yeah. have an inventory. Also. I don't have any yeah. more questions. No more questions. So it's just a consideration. John, do you have any further questions? No. Nope. Well, one of the nicest things that I saw. Okay, work on writing something up. Is their morning coffee over there? Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a wonderful social visit. It's, it's every day that they're open. I, what I really like to see, and I, I don't live in Brookfield. I, I live in Ludlow, and I was back in the building the new senior center. Mm -hmm. We built at the very, very entrance, and it's a large, it's an 18,000 square foot facility. We built a little coffee shop so people can come in in the morning, and some of the younger seniors who are still working can come in, have coffee, interact, and leave. And I'd love to have something like that here. And what time does that open in the morning? It opens, I believe, at, it's either 8 or 8.30. Okay, it's early not too morning. early, yeah. Um, and, you know, it's the whole idea is people can come in and, you know, not spend a lot of time there, grab a coffee and sit down. There's some tables and... I would love to see something like that here because uh, the key to making senior centers uh, successful, in my opinion, is is getting not just the older seniors in, but the younger ones who are still, especially the younger ones. Yeah, we're still because that's where it's going to be going. Yeah, they're the ones that are going to be able to continue it. Yes, uh, and it's that can be hard because they're still they've still got their working lives, and and you got to integrate them in. Do you send out programs to your seniors? Do a, a letter? Or... Yes. Yes. Every month? Yes. Yep. And you send them out to all your seniors or? I mail them and we also place them around, around the, the town. town. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Okay. Good. How many do you usually mail out? We we'll mail out I'm at 53 now. Because we have people that are starting to come in more, so they'll come in and they'll grab one when they come into the, when they visit the center. Um, we're working on email. There are some seniors out there that would like to have it emailed. There aren't a right. lot, but right. we're working on the process of getting. Because the, the problem is with my senior center, they use a, it's only a certain software that'll work with it. So I'm trying to find a workaround because we don't, it's, we're supposed to use Canva with it. 
but I'm trying to find a work around to get it so that I can get the newsletter in there to email it. So. Can you do it through your website? The town website? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I have to check in for that. We it. do. So I have been, um, we have the abil ability when I remember to send it to her, she will post it on the town website. So it's there as well. Um, and then we're also updating the list of activities on the town website as mm -hmm. well. So good. Yep. Send it out through Outlook as well mm -hmm. to a contact okay. list. Right. So one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, we thank you so much for coming in. Thank, thank you. you. It's a good discussion for our first one to see how we're coming along with this. And you'll uh, Very, be corresponding with us. We will be corresponding be, with you and be uh, getting back to you. Uh, mm -hmm. Probably not this week. I have surgery this this week, so okay, uh, that's fine. Should be back next week. Sounds okay, good. very good. Thank you so much for Thanks. all the information, Mike. If you want to just email it, I'll forward it to the board, or you can email it to Lucy, whoever you would like. Okay, we'll <laughs> do that. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Nice thank meeting you, you guys. Coming. Nice to meet you. Let's try this. Thank you. Oh. You're welcome. Oh, anything about that shot? Right? Okay. Must have gone. I, I felt it. <laughs> you see that chair? Take care. Okay, next on the agenda. Okay. Oh, yes. The store instead of trying to do the same thing, we got the FY24. Yes, this is for uh, Tom Hughes, the, his uh, emergency management grant that requires a signature um, from the board. This is the page. Lucy, I don't know. Just wanna... one signature. Yep, one signature. All right, so I'll make a motion uh, that we sign the FY, is that 24 or 25? 24 is when you're always behind. Okay, the FY 24. EMPG grant application. Authorize the chair to sign. And authorize the <laughs> chair to sign. And it's for the standard, what we typically every year is $2,700. Yeah. Okay. okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Date, right? Mm -hmm. There you go. Thank you. Up to fun. Up. So this is the most updated um, balance on the ARPA. Um, if you look on the last page under allocations, that $6,500 just came out. It's already allocated, but it's going to be transferred over to fully expenditure for the library. They just That was just processed in this warrant. Um, but with that, that doesn't affect the balance. The balance remaining is $18,294.63. That's the overall balance. That's available. Yeah. After the VAR. And with everything. Yep. Yeah. Because all these allocations are being deducted. Um, Did the um, the handheld. Yep. That we put back in. Yep. Because it, we mm -hmm. had taken it out. Put it it's on. For the radio. Yep. It's on the third page for 973.50. Oh, okay, down the bottom. The <laughs> motor roller. That's what it is. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, so our remainder was what? 18,000. 18, it's right on the last page. Yeah. Right there. Oh, okay. 
$15,294.63. Um, I didn't know if there was anything else under allocations that the board, I mean, everything is pretty committed. The only one that I would think that, you know, could be questioned is the dumpster and shred it. I don't know if we, if, if we're going to keep it, we need a contract by the end of this year okay. with the company. Well, it was, well, it wasn't board of health. That was when the former selectman was here as a, just a, a process. I don't think that was allocated under board of health per se. It was just for shredding documentations. Um, keeping in mind that hopefully the documentation that needs to be shredded has been approved by the state with the uh, restrictions on, you know, how, how the retention schedule. So I don't know if anyone's done that. I know that that project had started upstairs and I kind of, you know, stop there. So I don't know if retaining this 2004, the shredded project, um, it's something that you guys want to move forward with seeing that we're, I mean, we can put a, a deposit on a company, but I don't know if it's going to be enough. And then, you know, is it going to get actually shredded? I don't know. Hiring a company till we know what's going to go. Yeah. We've got to so, I mean, start over with yeah, going through what, goes into the shredder and this may not even be this fiscal year right correct so i is the, is the shredder for two thousand dollars the dumpster and shred it something that the board would like to put back to the balance or keep for now i would rather see it go back to the balance i would think it would have to go back a lot, a lot of work to, that's one of the records. Yeah, well, it's we just the record that. retention costs and submitting the yeah. paperwork yeah. um clearly we can speak with the other departments but again like you You're said right. it's a lot of work and limited right. personnel and staff no, I would add that. um green hollow cemetery arch mm -hmm. so okay. have we had any updates as to the i thought it was coming pretty soon yes he did say okay. that he was hoping by sometime end of october or, or sometime in november at the latest hopefully before snow if, before November 11th even would be nice. Yeah. yeah. And library roof seems to that, move that, it along. That's that, been paid, actually. So I'm going to move yeah, that to paid. expenditures. That just oh, got okay. paid they in this warrant. Yep. yep. Have we heard anything from Mr. Leacock about town hall painting? I have not. I know he said fall, but it's... It's kind of late. And we're right? getting into the fall. It's only been in one month. <laughs> but it's still... I don't know. Yeah. The snow's going to be coming well, pretty soon. The temperature that's what and paint, too. Maybe he has magic paint. <laughs> Let's hope not. Don didn't hear me say that, did you? Yeah, I did. So, um, yeah, we I, can I was follow hoping. up with him. <laughs> well, today's the 15th. So. Yeah, well, you know, sometimes it's really warm at the beginning of November. A few years ago, I was at the beach on November yeah, 11th. Yeah, that's true. See, yeah. You, you, you never Camp know. Down at the Cape, fishing on the boat. But yeah, he, even to water. fix them, I'll, you, I'll show you photos later. Even to fix some of the <laughs> things he needs to fix, he could fix them mm -hmm. before. Yeah. I even let the kids get school. Okay. okay. So warm. <laughs> Actually, Lucy, all we need him to do is sign our contract. Did we, did we send him one? No, but we can work on that tomorrow. Lucy. That, yeah, that we'll work on that because. The one we, that you guys voted. Yeah. one that we voted. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Okay. We have his contract already signed a year ago. Well, almost a year ago. And so, but we just they haven't had it transferred onto the town contract. Okay. We can so work on that. We so, do need to do that. That's why I was wondering if that had been done yet. So, yeah. But okay. well, most of everything else on here is past what we voted for that contract form, that standard form. Yeah. yeah. So, like the archway, that's beyond, it was before, it would be pointless. Yeah. Leave yeah. us in the other day. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And okay. Lori said she will be working on um, the actuary study. So that should be done soon. Okay. Um, so do you guys need to vote on the 2000 to please do? Yeah, we voted to put it in. I'll just vote to take it out. Right. That's on the shredding? The yeah. dumpster and shred it. Uh oh. What was that second page? Last page. Flip it. All right, I make a motion um, 
to put the two thousand dollars that was voted for dumpster and shred it back into the balance or the grand total for the mm -hmm. arbiter arpa Second. arpa money. Oh, Second. Eva. Aye. 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 Does the board have any new business? I do not. I do. You know what that is. I do. <clears throat> thinking we should probably put something together from the Alton Fund to help this family has three children involved. As long as we're within keeping of the intent of the Alden Fund, I don't have a problem. Yeah, it's very, very restrictive because it's... Is it for general welfare? Not particularly. It's for niceties for the poor. It would be nice if they had a little extra money to repair the house. Um, I was just I'm just trying to think of the wording of the original thing that that gentleman yeah. put out. Let's let's look into it. Because it was like anything covered by anything, especially anything having to the, do with the government and like that was not allowed. So I was just going through that because they do have insurance. That was something that wasn't covered. In, in that original document that I recall. No. So um, I would say a nicety. It was not to be used for an offset to. Of any cost. The town's department of the four, it wasn't to be used for. It was more to purchase niceties for the poor, which could be yeah. You know, pair of boots, jug of whiskey for the town drunk could be. Well, the example he gave was, oh, if you see so and so, you know, he's been in a chair for a long time, doesn't feel too well. Oh, give him a cigar. That a quote from him. So um, that's kind of what he had in mind, something like that. But the, the trouble with the Alden Fund is it predates 1964. That's the problem. And the Grand Society with welfare. With, it was from 1920. Um, three. 1917. 17? Yeah. <laughs> I so thought it was 23, but that's all right. It's very difficult to. Every board has struggled with, struggled with it. it. They really have. It, it is up to the discretion of the board of selectmen, and that's referenced in it. Um, At their discretion. So I think there's probably something we should find in the files and mm -hmm. to make sure. Because um, back then people didn't have house insurance either. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those types of things where in today's society everything is got a mortgage, you better have insurance or the bank's going to be. And the other side of it is the next time, the next time, the next time, you know, do we set a precedence based on a circumstance? So I, I understand what you're saying. You know, I, I, I understand. Yeah, we, well, we, we agree. What have you used it for? We have used it Something. to, we've used it for seniors. We've used it for, um, 
medical equipment for a couple of people. We used it for one person that was going into a rest home, but yet wasn't able to pay off her fuel bill. We did use it for that. Those are the more traditional. Now, when I was on the board before we used it, because uh, back then um, we were doing fruit baskets mm -hmm. instead of gift certificates. And the board at the time, we got names from the principal of the elementary school, the minister, and one of the parish priests where a lot of the OCAM people go to church out of town um, to come come up with a name or list of names for young families that were struggling, you know, financially. Mm -hmm. And what we did at Christmas time was um, we did gift certificates for $100 to, back then it was Victory Supermarket. And I forget how many there were. And that was in conjunction with the fruit baskets for everybody over 75. Because um, I didn't feel that the age thing necessarily met the criteria other than because you could theoretically be doing a fruit basket to you know a millionaire mm -hmm. <laughs> you know just happened to be over age 75 yeah. so it fell into it a lump sum we didn't ask them how much they made when they right. got that but it to follow the letter of the, of the the trust it's very much written in the last century, you know, over a hundred years ago. And it was written by, got that mindset at the time in the politics or not so much politics, but government at the time and how things work. So it's, it's been very difficult to, um, and then I realize it seems like there's a lot in the trust, but it could go very quickly. Um, so right. somewhere we have the document. Somewhere there is, I have seen it. I looked today. But and, it was a long time ago, but I, I did see it. The library have a copy. I kind of think they don't. I think it was mainly kept yeah. for the Board of Selectmen okay. to, to work with, because that's when I would have seen it is way right. back when. So that could be upstairs. I, yeah. no, Gosh, I hope not. I would think it, Cause it was hand, it was handwritten. Office, but it was it was written in cursive. Yes. And it had George Alden's signature on it. So I have a copy somewhere and I looked at home just from the last time on the board, I'd made a copy of it, but I haven't found it yet. So probably up in the attic, All right. but. We can hold off on this until we figure out if it's legit or not. Yeah. Okay. Just remember there were two other fires in town recently too. I thought of that, mm. yeah. And there was one last year. Yeah, I'm very leery. And hopefully there'll be no more for a long time. Okay. Okay. Any other new business? I I don't have anything. No. <clears throat> Any other new business? We have charter. Agreement in Skyline Drive. So, Maribel got some, and I spoke with David from KP Law this morning, and we went over the contract. And I don't know if David has a better understanding of wording in the contract versus his first opinion last week. Because um, I had pointed out that on page seven, and this is what he had quoted, 
was the parties acknowledge that this scope of work and charters cost estimates are preliminary in nature and are subject to revision based on archaeological findings or other factors identified during final engineering. Um, archaeological findings. So could be the Indians, though. It could have been something about that. Yeah. So I pointed out to David that it's not preliminary where we're at now. Because final engineering, comma, means that's doing their due diligence on what they're going to do, how they're going to do it, what they have to do. That's their engineering plan. So, and, and then it says including but not limited to changes in route or construction or materials or techniques, scope of work mutually agreed upon by the parties. This, in my opinion, and I said it to him was, this is before they string the first foot of wire, mm -hmm. before they trim the first tree, mm -hmm. before, you know, so it basically came down to It would probably cost us a lot to drag them in the court. But the other side of it is um, to quote you, if it was the shoe was on the other foot, uh, they probably wouldn't play ball with us. Yep. So he had suggested an option of taking the total divided by the total number of addresses to come up with a number for those two addresses. And Maribel pointed out to him, well, that scope of work to go from Rutherford Road to Stone Road is a bigger scope of work than saying, doing Grace's Lane. So I was like, there should be some type of penalty clause, you know, whether that's a you know, those two addresses divided by the total amount mm -hmm. or into the total amount plus 10%. Because what would have, what part of the project, you know, there was no engineering breakdown as the cost of each segment, mm -hmm. you know, that was, that I know of that was discussed. I mean, it predates me, but, um, So I had suggested to David that we'll talk tonight and that we should probably send them a registered letter saying, hey, look, we feel you are in violation of the contract uh, because this was your due diligence and your engineering before and see what they come back with. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they're not going to pony up two hundred fifty four fifty thousand more dollars. Because the way I read the letter they sent to Lucy was, it would require another two hundred fifty thousand on top of what's already there. Yeah. Yeah. Now the idea of adding two addresses and calling it even, and then writing them a check for ninety six thousand five hundred for the second payment to me is absurd because the Croc and I road address or whatever that they put down, there's going to be houses constructed on that road going forward. Mm -hmm. So they're going to end up putting that in anyways for those new houses, not at our cost, but just to tie in those houses. Yeah. I would think if those people want, you know, where the builder wants to put cable in those houses, mm -hmm. Why should we get involved in it? And the other one is off of Robinson, which is, I, I believe it's just a private drive going down. So what they would be getting out of mm -hmm. and what they would be doing don't equate at all, I don't think. Yeah. So your thoughts on it? I, I agree with you. Send the letter and back onto them. 
see what sticks. Yeah. Yeah. Because the way I just read that, you know, I, don't know, I got it if you want to read it, see if you read it the same way, but this is what David's quoting is this paragraph. And I read that as all preliminary work. I mean, it's going to be a game of chicken. Yeah. See who's willing to. And well, if I, I may, I, yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say really quickly, we made it very clear the time sensitivity due to the ARPA funds. Yeah. Yeah. Because if we're, if it's going to, there's going to be a price reduction of any sort, then we need to know that yesterday mm -hmm. so those funds can be allocated elsewhere to something else so yep. okay i mean obviously if they're not going to budge no, as far not. as no they're spending not. that kind of money to go up no and they like we've talked about before <laughs> and i mentioned before National Grid already dropped the poles off to, to go up through the woods. Mm -hmm. So they evidently had a head button thing with National Grid. National Grid said, most likely, oh, yeah, that's fine, but you're going to pay this for us to do this. Mm -hmm. And that's corporate yeah. negotiations. Yeah. It had nothing to do with us. Yeah. So it, it comes full circle around to Charter didn't do their engineering and they didn't do their due diligence and they were playing old camp for a bunch of rubes. On top of sending a letter, there was, um, I don't know if there's any discussion of if there is a meeting ever to be held because Charter doesn't want to be in a public meeting. Typically they had asked to speak with the chair or a board member. Um, David from KP Law did suggest you know, having one board member designated or attend a, a, a possible future meeting to kind of try to figure out a plan um, if that's something that the board would want to do. And if so, maybe which member they said it was allowed, but I kind of pushed back that I didn't feel comfortable with that. They they're because... not going to want to do an open meeting. And I know that in certain yeah, in the, on circum record is a rep it'll be their reputation on the record. In cir certain circumstances, I know that you know there's been that one board member and then reports back, kind of take the call or take the meeting. So, just something for you guys to think about that if it gets to that point, who would want to but be? It would, it would be very difficult for the one board member to get into that kind of discussion and negotiation. Mm -hmm not knowing or having the authority to speak for the other two. Exactly. And then come back to and then have the other two go, well, no. Well, no. And then Yeah, there would be so a the lot negotiation of... would be just dragged on. It would be it would be difficult. It would be kind of be like Henry Kissinger least... going back and forth to Paris for I think it would be one of those like, <laughs> okay, here's the phone call scheduled or the meeting on a Monday in, in preparation, already having a work session probably set for Wednesday to discuss it with the full board and, you know, a little choppy. I just don't know if they're willing or would budge on meeting in a public meeting because did they ever come before the board before? No. So these contracts were presented when they were signed in behalf of the committee that did a lot of the work through council being involved and in reviewing it. So there was a lot of that back and forth, but Charter never be, came before a board at a public meeting. Is if we have intention. Pending litigation. That's true. Mm -hmm. Well, that's that may be the way to go if 
we invite them in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because then we, that the three of us would be, be here, strategy. we'd be able to say, yeah. okay, hey, look, this is the way we read it. You read it differently. Um, we read it as you didn't do your due diligence and that's shame on you, not us. Mm -hmm. um, would that be wise to have representation at the executive session or just oh, yes. for sure? Because I'm, I'm sure they're not coming oh, yes. if they do agree to come. Lawyer to lawyer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe we should contact David tomorrow and suggest whether he comes or I don't know. I think we would rather Jared come. But... <clears throat> you could phone in too. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, that's... I mean, we, we've, got, Zoom in. we've got the Zoom, so yeah. we could use it that way. Yeah. Sure. You could all go on Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did like Mike from the firm. Yeah. He's pretty sharp. But he doesn't do this kind That's of stuff. That's not his special. But, uh, but I think he'd right. probably be pretty good at it in this case. You know, to he was great. You really need a you really need a bulldog on this. Yeah. To drive home the fact that you did not do, and you led us to believe that you did, but right. you didn't, well, and that's not our fault. Maybe. That's right. Because if you had needed another hundred thousand or another. That's something that you should have presented in your in your contract. Yep. So if whoever you sent out was, you know, afraid to go and walk up that leg of three poles or four poles or whatever it is through the woods, um, that's on them. That's not on us. No. No. You know, if they're afraid of going in the woods, or, and I bet you that's probably what it was. I don't. <laughs> It could very well be, or they need to cut trees down where they could, so they could put something else up there. It is thickly settled with the trees. No, and enough. I mean, my understanding is there is. Grid says they do have to uh, go up through there and maintain that that circuit. Yeah, because people live up there, right? And those poles going up there put in the nineteen twenties or thirties. Well, that's on there. They're just national grid. Just you know, that has to go through the budget process. Yeah. Okay. We're going to have to check how much money we have in our legal fund before the end of the year, too. If we're going to have our lawyer present at the same time as the other lawyer is there. Now, can we use ARPA for that? If it's if we spend it out of that first, maybe we should. Earmark what we have left for legal expenses would be the only thing. I mean, and, and pay these expenses as they come up for this, because otherwise, if something else comes up, we're going to be depleted. Yeah, going forward, yeah, you can use that. And they just as they come in, pay it out of out of that mm -hmm. instead of out of the the budgeted, and that'll leave how much. I have no idea. Maybe we should ask. I was just going to say, ask him approximately what it would cost. Yeah. He knows. It's not his first rodeo. He's done this before. <laughs> because if we got to earmark the money anyways, mm -hmm. um, nobody else has beat, beat the door down for the remainder of this is broke, that's broke, we need this, we no. need that. So. Okay. I mean, I don't think it should be our intent to to do that. It should be, but I don't think we should roll over and take it either. No, no. So, on the uh, the other front, the skyline. I'm going to let Maribel start you. <laughs> that one. Another legal expense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so Sharon from town council uh, got a response from the resident on Skyline Drive in regards to the board of selectmen's uh, offer of the $1,200 for legal expenses for their attorney. And the response read as follow. 
Hello, Sharin. The amount offered may or may not cover the cost of my attorney fees. I would feel more comfortable with confirmation. With confirmation, attorney fees would just be covered completely. I will not be paying for any attorney fees associated with this. After speaking about this with my attorney, we feel like 2,500 would be a better guess, but still may or may not get this done. If you agree to the figure though, and we do not have this wrapped up, the process would need to come to a stop and attorney fees would still need to be paid by your client, meaning the town. And to proceed any further, your client will need to still pay to agree to pay the rest of the um, the rest of the fees to get this across the finish line. On the flip side, if the if it's less, then of course your client wouldn't spend that much. Thanks. Have a great a great day. So, her her um, email said, Maribel, please see response. Uh, please let me know if the town is willing to amend to twenty five hundred dollars. If it needs additional work by his attorneys, he will not finalize the easement. Also note that the town will be required to pay regardless of whether the parties reach an agreement or not. So there. Mm -hmm. So the town legally does not have a dog in the hunt whatsoever. And he hasn't said that I will give the town the easement. So to to spend twelve hundred or twenty five hundred and not knowing, you know, whether he agrees with the general premises of all this. So to go forward and you know do this, do that, and whatever, and then at the last minute he goes, you know, I don't want to do that. <clears throat> so with this that was voted, uh, I'm kind of whether it even applies. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. The six F that was voted was repealed. And I think it ties into six D in the the new mass general laws. Yeah. Um, but that's more in regards to repairs, maintenance of the roadway, et cetera which we're under no obligation whatsoever to do. So if the drainage plugs up, don't call us. Type of thing. Can we take the roadways by eminent domain and leave the easement off? You probably could, we can ask, but- she, yeah, go ahead. yeah, I was gonna say, I think that she said it's definitely an option you can explore. It's just going to be clearly you're trying to avoid any litigation and, and stuff like that. You want to do it the easy way or the smoother way. Um, but, but she did state that if that did happen, I have to find the email, not be alarmed that the resident would probably sue. It would be dragged through court. Super. That he wouldn't obtain probably anything at the end of the day, but just the cost of litigation itself. Well, the, I don't know. This is side. just her overall. Yeah, you know, it's his property. If it backs up, it backs up onto his property. But if we take the roads by eminent domain, then it's up to us. And now the town is dumping water on his property through this underground pipe. So now he has an avenue mm -hmm. to get um, somebody to go after. Where if we don't take the roads by eminent domain or vote to take the roads, he has nothing to come after the town for. If the beavers go up the pipe and plug that pipe and it blows the cast 
catch basin lids off into his front yard and floods out his basement, that's on him. Where if we accept the roads one way or the other before getting that easement, that we own legally, we, we could own the damage to his property because he's at the bottom of the run. Mm -hmm. Where if we just plow the roads and go. Now, did they have to be, if I, I can't recall, um, was there something in question of whether they were public ways and that was the way to plow them or just plow them no matter what, right? No, we, we adopted the law state. Okay. For plow. Okay. In 63, yeah. 1963, yeah. Okay. For, for down on Lake Dean. Mm -hmm. Sure. Now, the council also said if you have other roads that you're plowing, you can't stop plowing this way. Right. So if this didn't exist down here, we would have never had to. We wouldn't have this. Yeah. Uh, but it may have jumped the gun when we agreed to do it, when Sonny said he wasn't going to do it anymore. Probably had a legal right not to let him off the hook as far as the probably as far as the um, uh, as far as the development you were not board that's exactly what i said no. two years ago this is not our issue yeah but the homeowners sue him Mm -hmm. That's where it should have gone. And the bankruptcy of Old Camp Sand and Gravel should have never dragged the former owner of that into right. any of this. Right. It it should have just been Sonny Como. Yep. Mm -hmm. And be done with it. But because he said he wasn't going to plow it, we, we, Town should have never got involved. Well, go ahead, don't plow it. It's got nothing to do with us. Mm -hmm. Is really what should have been said at the time. And I, I mean, I wasn't on the board. I don't know what happened. It was said at the time, and the <clears throat> issue came in about public safety. Yeah, that's how we ended up getting to where we were. If somebody's having a heart attack at the end of that street and it's not plowed, what do we do? No, and I understand that if somebody's house catches fire. And yeah. And they're paying taxes. They're not getting a lower discount because. Right. That was the thing was that they all pay taxes. Right. But it doesn't. All that aside, it doesn't absolve. That this whole. Housing development went through the planning board process. And. Because of bankruptcy, et cetera. And all that went on. It had nothing to do with the town of Oakland. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The town should be just going like this. They were waiting for you, whoever, to tell us that it's ready to be accepted. Mm -hmm. We can't separate the two roads from each other. They would make um, schoolhouse a dead end. If we fired off that, that's exactly connector. well. We couldn't do it anyways. We don't own it. That's exactly what council said. So we have another development that gets built, and we don't accept those roads. Guess what? Mm. We got to do that one too. Yeah. You know. Well, to a point, it's on this side. where it's an approved project through the planning board. Well, and if everything goes correctly, <laughs> you don't need to plow it. You know, it, it would just be okay. Are you coming to town meeting? And planning board signs off, and right. we accept it at town meeting. Right. If it if there's an issue with it, we wait till the contractor or the developer fixes the issue right. exactly before we get involved. It's exactly. not going to be a if they go bank, it's automatic. Exactly. It's, it's not, not automatic. automatic. No. But I think this would have been resolved 
if and it's hindsight it's 2020 you know it's if we hadn't plowed the roads there would have been a lot more pressure to mm -hmm. within that group of residents to mm -hmm. hey what's going on because i guarantee you most of them have no clue no it, they're doing their own thing and and i wonder if mr como really wouldn't have done it you know what I mean? I know that that wasn't a gamble because well, clearly he, residents' lives are. I wouldn't have taken a bet against. <laughs> no, I wouldn't either. But he had a legal obligation. Mm -hmm. So I mean, the residents could have ganged up on him, taken him to court. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what should have happened. They should have gone after him for not plowing. Mm -hmm. you know? But I mean, it's hindsight. We we are where we are with it right now. So. But unless the resident wants to give us an affirmative that he will accept and sign off on the easement, I don't think we should do anything else. Because he hasn't said, you know, is he going to put up a fuss and say, no, nah, I'm not doing this mm -hmm. after the money's spent? Mm -hmm. You know, we want a guarantee from him that he's going to accept. And it doesn't sound like right. he's willing to do that. And if he doesn't, and we need to get down there and get through there, he could. So a guarantee. Very difficult. Yeah. Well, there, there would be no going down there is what I'm getting at. If he does not sign over that easement to the town, we will not go down there if, if the beavers plug up that pipe or right. under any circumstance. Or if the right. house catches on fire. Well, that's a different thing. Because, well, it was a. It's it's a fire pond. Yeah, that's true. He's taking the he's taking the chance. I forgot about that. Yeah, that it's is a, a fire, fire pond. pond. I mean, we're under no obligation to clean that pond or nothing. So, do you want me to communicate with council that the town wants a guarantee, and do you guys have a dollar cap? To go back because again she said you know they said 25 would be a better guess but not a guaranteed guess and we offered 1200 1200 which is under the allocations of the um in arpa 1201 well i mean you're more versed on stamps recording fees and all that stuff I mean, is it more than 1200 dollars for something like that does he want a survey know. for he just that thirty five hundred dollars? That's where it could come in. Um, Again, so the so it's all right. for attorney fees, though. Not, you know, not additional costs. So that wouldn't to me wouldn't be an attorney fee. But again, I think we should tell Sharin we want a written guarantee that he will sign off on the easement before we agree to. That's what I was going to say. Any more money in the legal fee because if it's just going to spend a bunch of money with his attorney and then he's going to go at the last minute yeah right we're we just need to walk away right and yeah leave it at that because yeah. there there is no the onus way. on us to we've really done the town has done way more than it ever should have mm -hmm. in any of this so if there's a confirmation hypothetically that they he agrees to for sure to sign it over again kind of whatever the attorney fees are i mean it shouldn't be i i would not no right that's what i'm whatever. saying right put a number down okay. stick to the number right but that's what i'm saying to you guys what would you what would you think because they're saying we'll start at 25. It might be less, fine. but it can be more. And if it's more, he made it very clear that he is not going to pay anything towards his attorney fees. What's the difference between the $1,300 difference? So $1,950. Yeah. Well, I mean, like I say, the other side of it is I I would like some kind of affirmative statement out of him. I was going to say that, yeah, yeah that exactly. Nineteen fifty with a guaranteed statement that he's yeah. going to go along. Also, with not this. the twelve, not the twenty five, nineteen fifty. Because he hasn't, 
he either doesn't have the... He hasn't shown any goodwill on our end to us. We're the ones that keep going and going and going. And he's just saying no. Right. No. I mean, um, again, just based on his correspondence on the... That's a better guess. I will not pay anything I just towards gave, it. I just gave you my best guess. I like it. <laughs> I will let her know so she can communicate this. I mean, frankly, I'm ready to... Right now. I am not too. do another thing about it. I am too, but... Um, we, Maribel asked Sharon if Mr. Amadio was free and clear with what he's already signed. She said yes. And same for... Homeowner. They would have to sign waivers, yeah. but if or, they're uh, damage waivers, I think she said. Yeah. But if if the town if the town isn't going to accept the roads for whatever reason, then they don't have to do that. But they've already signed over. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever interest said, they had yeah. has already been gone through. Yeah. So theoretically, Mr. Ramadio, yeah, Como or free and clear. Yep. of any responsibility for those roads. Exactly. So at this point, you know, we can be like, we'll plow the snow one time at the end of the storm and sand the road. You know, we're not going to plow it 10 times. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll, we'll plow it at the end of the storm and or whatever the interval is equivalent to down here. Yeah, yeah. And um, it's last on the list. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Type so, of thing. Do we need a new... Um... A motion to amend the twelve hundred to nineteen fifty, please. From the ARPA. So moved. Do we do we even want to do that yet? Or do we want to have she needs something solid to go back to the attorney? <laughs> number wise. Number wise, number wise. Do we want to go to Sharin first and say, look, we need confirmation. It's all part of what she's doing. From him that he's going to go forward with this in good faith and not change or maybe his leave mind it at out. the last minute. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't leave it out. Mm -hmm. That's what I was saying. That in with the guarantee of mixed talk. Right. See because that. if we're going to go through all this, we'll be here every week. Spend a bunch of money and no. he's going to wet his finger and stick it up to see which way the wind's blowing. Yeah. Um, and then so 1950. I, don't, I honestly don't think he even understands what this is. I don't think he does either. Because so this is not a big deal. It's already in the ground. It's like, okay, you bought this house for 700 and some odd thousand dollars. Did you not look at your plot plan when you bought it? Or did you not read the legal description? Did you not? Obviously, he didn't. He think he doesn't know there's an easement there. Well, so Supposedly, it's not on a deed, correct? Somehow, it how got, did that it, Somehow, it got missed. Mm. And it was not on. So he the feels former, none of the original it is owner's his fault deed. That he did everything he was supposed to do when he purchased it. But you would have thought when he bought the property, and he okay, here's my corner pin, here's the the north pin, here's the east and mm -hmm. west pin. Well, there's a big pipe coming out of. Mm -hmm. That didn't trigger any alarms in his, you know, buying the property. And in the subdivision layout, it's clear. Yes. And it's in there. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. So what did the title company look at? That's what I'm wondering. It's it's way back that yeah. far that yeah. they didn't look at it and it got missed. Yeah. And he have... got what he thought was, he didn't know way anything that, about it. So he's, back in that's why he's sticking back saying, Hey, this is what I bought, and this is what I'm getting, and you're not taking anything. Yeah, which is sewage title company. So, which is exactly that's what I. Which is why I say, about. I'm at the point if if this is where he's at, like Lucy says, town should walk away and not get invested any further into it, because there's only one outcome mm -hmm. for the town of Oak Hill. And if he's not in agreement with that, then, you know, we just say, okay, see you later. So give him the 1950 with a concrete or just say, will he be? Um... No, 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 I don't care what he wants to be. Mm -hmm. The concrete agreement that he's going to accept. 
He's but still offering just the 1950 for financial. Okay. But the big part of that is I think that will he my, has to state he will accept the easement. Right. Right. I think the number being below what he says is probably gonna be instantly no. Cool. That would be my it's problem. Cool. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah. It's yeah. not I want and we give. I mean Yeah. Okay. Who's his attorney? I don't know. Could be his wife's brother. And <laughs> they're gonna kick back the difference. <laughs> I'm half joking, but I, I, you know. they are lawyers. <laughs> Stranger things happen. Yeah. Another motion. Second that. Motion to adjourn. No, no, no. I, I... <laughs> I, yeah, I like that. I one second better. Don's motion for the 1950 with uh, right. an agreement with to, the confirmation. To town council tomorrow morning. Yes. Sure. <laughs> That's funny. Let's try losing. No, I did my best. <laughs> um, so going forward, depending on how this works out, we will have to instruct, instruct the highway department. Mm. That you will not go down there mm. for any road maintenance. Yeah, no. Whatsoever. No. no. Snow and ice only. That's it. No potholes, no, no cutting mm -hmm. brush, mm -hmm. no cleaning out culvert pipes, no nothing. No. Up no until cleaning such up the time, sedimentation pond. No. Nope. Can't. Not until we have the illegal no. authority. Because I get called in the summer for that because of the mosquitoes. No. <laughs> Yeah, but that's once yeah. again. Yeah. You're out in the country and they're everywhere and it's not. But they our... gather on the pond. And the pond is pretty stagnant because of the beavers. Yeah. True. It it doesn't flow as much. So where it just sits there, they get all the mosquito nests and then it bugs the people who have paid eight hundred plus thousand dollars for a house. Mm -hmm. They don't want the mosquitoes with it. Don't move yet. <laughs> well, Halloween's coming, they can go. We'll talk to their neighbor, which I'm sure none of them, except Mr. Ham and you, know anything about this. Yeah, I know. It's totally, it's not their issue. They're not concerned with no, it. No, no. It doesn't affect them. The only thing that would affect them is if the road didn't get plowed, they'll well, welcome our roads not plowed. Well, it's because the town doesn't own it. Yeah. If that had happened, I think this thing would have moved differently. But I understand you gotta get the ambulance in if you need it. You gotta get the fire yeah, trucks in. Yeah, we do. And... Oh, move second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah, motion to adjourn. Oh, sure. You get to do it. Or, well, you can do it if you want. You, I'm you not need to say, second it. How's that? <laughs> you need to say aye on this first. 747. <laughs> Did you say aye? No. On the. Uh, on this. On the. Skyline. Skyline. Yes, I did. Oh, okay. Okay. Lucy seconds the motion to adjourn at 747. Okay. We got a vote. Hi. 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 I waited. It's junior. <laughs>